Thank you, Contessa, for the amazing questions. And Maggie, for the inspiration and sharing your experience and expertise. And wow, I, I have chills. I'm sure everybody does as well. I'm also really excited to introduce our next speaker. This is Mary Davis Holt. Uh, she, you may know her. She's a senior leadership consultant at Flynn Keith Holt, which is one of very few firms in the US that is geared towards accelerating women leaders. Uh, Mary is also the former COO of Time, Inc., and is a New York Times bestselling author of two books, Break Your Own Rules, which is a great title for this group, and also The Influence Effect. Um, Mary's going to share with us some perspectives on building your personal brand, and uh, please join me in welcoming Mary. Thank you. We're going to change it up. We're going to get sort of granular on personal brand. And we're going to start in a very interesting way, and I'll hope this. So is everybody ready? We have time. They're giving me more time. I'm going to go one by one and have you each stand up and tell me your personal brand. <laughs> are you ready? Okay, for those of you on the front row who are saying, I got it. All right, you can start texting. No, don't. Uh, for those of you who think, think I think I got it. This is going to be great. You're going to have a check-in. And for those of you who are saying, oh, my gosh, I don't want to do this at all. I don't want to stand up and say a word. You're going to have homework. You're going to go home with homework. Uh, and you have a sheet here. I'll, I'll start by, it talks about your professional brand. This is for you to take notes, to think about things you might want to add to your brand. So as we go through this, make a few notes for yourself uh, because... This is an incredibly important concept, and where is um, Maggie? I had the same thing. I, what was a personal brand? When I started in the 70s at Time Warner, I had not a clue what this was about, or mentors or sponsors or anything. Now, of course, it's in the vernacular. It's very, very important. And what I hear from the women I coach, they say, I don't know how you know, authentic this really is. And When do you really use your personal brand? And isn't it just really all about me? I just have to show up and, and, and be me? Uh, well, sort of, but there's way more to it than that. Is it you? Absolutely, it's you. It's your authentic self. Maggie said, and how are you going to show the people you're talking to, whether that's within your organization, maybe you're on a big interview, maybe you're up for board service and you're doing it. How are you going to show your value? You must be intent. This is the key for this next half hour. Be intentional. Be purposeful, plan it, practice it, use your significant other, your children, whatever, practice your personal brand. This is not something that's just going to roll off your tongue. You have to think about it, and you have to get ready to show it. Now, I believe, this is my personal belief, that at the core of any person, because some, some people say, well, I'm really different at home versus the office. Well, core you is the same everywhere. Maybe there's some different experiences you want to share, depending on your audience. But at the core, it's you. And we're going to talk about what makes up a brand. Uh, because you got a brand right now. You're putting it out all the time. What's a brand? A brand is when I leave this stage and leave this room, what do you remember about me? What do you, Maggie, in the first, uh, with Contessa's help, in the first five minutes, she gave you her brand. At 28, I went on my first board. That's part of her brand. What does that tell you? It tells you brave, courageous, directed, ambitious, successful. You don't get on a board at 28 unless you don't. You, that was a great brand story, and it took about one minute. So we learned a lot. We, I could do your brand right now. I know a lot about Maggie. Just write it up for me. <laughs> you need no help. Um, so... You know, what, what, it's a promise of what you're going to get if you get me. So whether you're selling something, you want to get on a board, you want the big job, if you pick me, this is what you're going to get. That's what you want the person you're talking to to know. And it's both verbal and nonverbal. You know that over 90% of people's impressions of us is nonverbal. So it's everything. It's your energy level. It's what, it's your voice, it's your physicality, it's your image, it's everything before you even open your mouth. It says hugely about yourself, right? 
So it's all of this together. And listen, to have a great personal brand, you don't have to be a wild extrovert. You can be a quiet, gravitas introvert. Whatever you are, use it. Get people to lean in. and If you're, if you're more introverted, you're more quiet. Get people to lean in to listen to you. If you're a big extrovert, be careful. Don't, over, don't overdo it, actually, with some of your audiences. So we've all got things to learn about personal brand. It's not generic. It, it differentiates you. And I'm going to talk in a minute briefly about using stories like Maggie did. She told many stories. Storytelling is a great way and a comfortable way. And people remember stories. They're not going to remember the years you went to, you were at this, uh, your resume listing of I was here from 2000. Da, da, da. They're not going to remember all that. What are they going to remember? A story you told them about you. I recently had a bank board interview. Five guys, me, in a restaurant. And the first thing the chair of the board did is he said, Mary, tell us your story. Well, thankfully, I teach this. I better know what I'm doing, right? I was ready, and I knew what I wanted them to remember about me when I left. I was ready to talk. And I could tell within a minute they were with me. Well, why did you do that? That's so interesting. I thought, all right, it's working, right? You tell stories. You engage. You put out a positive feel for us because what you want to do is draw people to you as you're talking. So you have to really be intentional. What is it I want them to remember about me? So do you know what yours is? Is it what you want it to be? When's the last time you even thought about this? Maybe if you had an interview or you had a bank board interview like I did, you did think about it. I will tell you a very quick story of a woman I was coaching. We were having uh, three workshops, and all the women in the program come to all three workshops, and then they get coaching, with me, got my coaching or someone in our group. And the first workshop, um, she never came. She never made it. And I got on the phone, and I said, well, what happened? And she said, well, you know, I just got so carried away with work. I said, well, wait a minute. Your firm's investing in you and putting this, you know, they, this is for you and your growth and your career. You need to you need to show up. And she said, I'll be at the next one. So the next one, she is an hour late, and she walks in head first, hair flying, sweating, with, you know, the briefcase, the pocketbook, the books from the thing. All this stuff comes in and sits down with a clump. And when I, looked, I thought, what is going on? So we did brand that day. And so um, later on the phone, not in public, I said, what do you think your brand is? I said, do you, you, you know, let's talk about this. And she said, harried new mother. I said, you got it. <laughs> you got it. Listen, you get to be a harried new mother, but when you come to the office, you need to think a little bit about it. She really needed to get herself together. And showing up late, no matter what your brand is, is not a great idea. Uh, leaving early is an also, if you're at meetings, you know, getting to meetings early is a great way to network and meet people and catch up and do all that relationship building you want to do, right? So you have to think about, how am I showing up? How am I putting myself forward? We love this. Dolly, figure out who you are and then do it on purpose. That's what I want you to do. And I don't mean this purposely. She, she does know who she is and she does do it on purpose and she's good at it. I want you to figure that out. That's what a personal brand's all about. So I also want you to know your brand can change a little bit. At the core, you don't. Your DNA doesn't. But your brand can change. I started off as a corporate executive with Time Warner. So my brand was one set of attributes, and I had those stories to tell. Then I become an executive leadership coach, a consultant, a facilitator, an author, all these things. Now, do I pull some of my Time Warner stories in? Of course, but what am I talking about? I'm talking about the wonderful women like all of you that I get to work with, their stories, their successes. That's what, when, when people are talking to me, that's really what they want to know about. And the stories help people say, well, what in the world does a coach do? Does that mean I'm getting fired? Well, no. An executive coach is usually a perk. It's a wonderful thing to have. And let me tell you some stories. 
So my brand has really changed over time. And not that I don't pull some of the old ones in, but I want to think, I want you to think about if any of you were in, uh, A, up for a big job in your own organization, you'll be going through an interviewing process or some informal conversations. You're up for a big external job. You may, you may be interviewing with headhunters, with the CEO, with the board chair, who knows. And you may be up for board service. Have you thought about your core brand and how you want to show yourself? And then been purposeful about how do you bring value in those different environments? That's what we're going to spend a little time doing today. And this is not, I used to think, when I get a certain age, I'm going to be baked, cooked, and iced. You know, I'm going to be done with leadership because I'm going to be a great leader. And I'm not going to need to learn anything else or, or go to any training. And, of course, it's now my business, and you're never baked or done. You're always learning and evolving. And so is your brand. So what do you want somebody to remember about you? Your business results and impact? your great leadership style and what you've done with teams or the organization. You know, what do you want people to remember about you? Being memorable is what the brand's all about. All right, so on your sheet of paper, these are the components that I use in my coaching and my training for personal brand. And if you want to make some notes on here, please do. I'm going to talk about each one of them. This is the short course. I have a half an hour. So we're going speed, speed personal brand here. So we're going quick. So be, stay with me. The first you want to communicate, and I've been talking about that, is who are you at the core? I view this as, I often think, what did your mother or father tell you when you were five years old about yourself? What has been with you your whole life? You know, for me, it was Mary, you talk too much and you're really too bossy. So here I am, a big leader who gets to talk and talk to y'all all the time. Uh, being a product of my wonderful, genteel southern mother, um, she sort of beat that out of me until I got back in corporate America and realized I better shape up and start talking a little bit more and uh, be comfortable talking about myself because you have to learn to do that. So who are you at your core? Um, are you more extroverted? Um, are you um, quieter? How do you want people to perceive you? What's, what's there? Um, maybe you were always a risk taker. Maybe you were always getting to tr into trouble because you were always taking those risks. So I want you to think about who are you at your core and what would you like? Now, I believe a lot of this just comes by talking. Your energy level. Your, you get introvert, extrovert by just listening. The whole front row just left. Uh-oh. Um, you get a lot of this from your natural self. All right, but do think about how were you known as a, as a little girl or a little boy. And that's probably still who you are. It's evolved, but it's who you are. Now, your talents, that's sort of your resume, right? And what of that do you want them to know about? I'm uh, coaching a woman who's an Olympic bronze medal winner in synchronized swimming. Now, when she tells that story, it's about teamwork, collaboration, being willing to fail, practice, 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 many leadership stories out of that. That's a talent she has. She's now in the financial world. Um, that's a talent. That's a great story to tell. Maybe you're the closer. Maybe you're the person who always gets it done. Maybe you're the fixer. I love stories about people who were born in other countries, come here, and what happens to them. Those are talents. Those are great stories. People love, and they remember those stories. I, always, uh, I used to think my southern accent when I first came. I was, lived here in New York for 20 years and thought I lost my accent. But when they'd ask me where I work, I'd go Time Incorporated, and they'd say, Tom who? Um, <laughs> I now think my accent is memorable. And you might think, who was that southern woman who was up there talking? Originally from North Carolina. So accents are good things, I think. They differentiate yourself. They're memorable. Use it. Use who you, whatever you are, use it with purpose. Use it with intention. Um, if you're a fabulous musician, if you're an athlete, if, if you're a, um, an academic, you've got Ph.D., 
always, and I just said this to somebody who's in the room, um, say your title and what you are. I was coaching a woman who was an accounting partner. She, I said, would you do your personal brand for everybody in the room? And she did. She did a beautiful job. I said, Julia, I, did you say you were a partner? She said, oh, no. And I said, why not? Well, I don't want to make anybody feel uncomfortable, like I'm bigger than they are. I said, wait a minute. That is your title. That's what you are. You're not saying, guess who I am? I'm a partner. You're saying, I'm a partner, and my name is. Make sure you let people know your titles. And if you have a complicated title or a difficult job, you better have a sentence or two that your mother could understand. People like to know what you do. Now, this takes not too much time but a little thought. I had somebody just say about my son that they, his child didn't know what he did, and I said, you got to work on this. This is not too good. You know, your children need to understand what you're doing and your job. So can you clearly articulate what you do? Your specialty and niche, pretty easy. I'm a leadership coach. I'm a leadership consultant. What's my niche? Executive women. Can you do that? You need to be able to very simply say that. And finally, and the passion part's important, you all. What do you love about what you do? What do you, what, what, what do you enjoy? Where do your passions lie? I love seeing my women evolve and grow and get what they want, get where they want to go and feel that success and empowerment and happiness. that, that I, mean, I become the proud mother. I love that about what I That's why I do what I do. I want to, as you say, pull all that younger generation and not have them suffer through everything I had to suffer through. I want them to have an easier go of it. The passion part is important because, again, it draws. I love to talk to people who love what they do. So people need like to know what, what interests you about what you do, what's fun about what, what you do. So these are all the components. And this just takes a little thought and a little practice. And it isn't a jerry-rigged role play where you're being an actor. It is you're engaging with someone, and they want to know what you do. And you don't do it the same. It's not a script where you do it in order. It flows. It becomes natural. And it, if you're thinking about board service versus maybe a job, it would be different because you have a different audience. You with me? Did you make some notes? Okay. Um, and as I said, what do they remember when you leave the room? Critical, critical. They need to have a memory of you, all right? So um, I would bring the board work in. I uh, sit on American Funds, which is part of the capital group. I sit on two of their clusters, mutual funds. Um, love it. And I started board work young as well and have always really enjoyed it. And the thing I love is I learn so much, constantly learning things. I don't think I'd learn any other way. You've got to do some work to get your resume ready and your personal brand ready for board service. You have to be able to take that resume and make it interesting to a board. Why, would, why does this resume appeal to a board? What can you contribute? What do you have to offer? Um, many of you probably have seen this list before, but I thought I'd chat about it just a little bit. Uh, what are they looking for in board members? And how might you show that um, when you talk to them or in your resume, in your board bio, your board resume? Certainly general business experience. This isn't too surprising. Management experience. Um, in my board work, and Maggie, you've been on a million more boards than I have, I never have had a board member who <laughs> hadn't been in business. So the business experience is de rigueur, got to happen. You know, financial service experience is still um, a draw. If you were a CFO, a controller, if you were a CPA partner, uh, all of those things, because all boards need financial experts and need financial literacy on the audit committee and on the board. It's still extremely important. So you want to play that up. Now, previous board experience, I think, is a catch-22 for women and, and uh, people of color minorities. If I've never been on a board, how do I get on a board? you got to give me a chance here, right? And that's where boards have to look beyond the titles sometimes. Maybe you were a divisional leader or a regional leader. Maybe you weren't a C-suite person. Well, what did I do? How did I have impact? What difference did I make to my company? So that's where the translation piece, you know, has to happen. 
And if boards are demanding previous board experience, they'll never get a lot of women and they'll never get a lot of diversity. So they've got to broaden out on that one. Um, if you have industry uh, experience specific to that board, that's a fabulous draw. They want that because you already come knowing the situation. I had no mutual fund experience. I, that wasn't what they were necessarily looking for, so I was very fortunate that what I bring to the party and, and where they were going uh, matched. Boards are looking for gender diversity and they are looking for general diversity. So um, this is a good time for us to be looking. And there's way more than a Fortune 500 company board. There are lots of boards out there. And I will tell you, a great way to get experience is to do not-for-profit work, whether that's on your own college or university trustee board, or your local charity that you care about, but get yourself on a hardworking board. Fundraising, financials, investments, something you can point to and say, I had real board experience here. So make sure that you get on a board that translates to a corporate board if that's what you want to do. Um, time and time again, I hear cultural fit. We want somebody that we can collaborate with, be collegial with, we can trust. Uh, that we think will fit the culture of this board. So that's an, a great way, that's a place for you to do your homework. Um, and finally, if you have specific skills, this won't surprise you. Cyber's huge, social media is huge, marketing's huge. Um, if you are a global citizen and you've run a global part of your company, huge draw now for boards. So really think about your resume and dissect it and analyze it and see what you can offer, um, because I do think boards are, are looking for that these days. Um, I've already said it. Stories are the way to, t I think, I, I say stories are the language of leaders. That's how leaders get your attention. And so telling stories, you've had great example from Maggie, you're going to get a lot more stories. They really work. Think about a story. It's not just a narrative. It's got an arc. It's got, it's got a little drama to it, perhaps. Maggie had some great stories she told this morning. She had our attention. So think about how to pull in those stories in your life. And make sure, just like we talked about, they show your value. They show you at your best. Now, this isn't going to happen. Whoops. Let me go back. If you're not ready, if you're not prepared, write it down if you need to. Practice it. I practice stuff all the time. I practice in the shower. I practice in the car. If I'm doing a new speech, I make my spouse listen, and he is a t very serious critic. He'll say, he'll stop me in the first place. You lost me already. I've already lost you. But if he's not getting it, my audience isn't going to get it. There's no, this is not about, I'm going to go through it in my head. That is not practicing. Practicing is out loud. Because when I practice out loud, I say, that didn't really sound too. That's not really what I want to say. Let me redo this. Let me recast it. And then I can go through. I, I do bullets, then I practice section by section. Bullet by book, bullet, section by section is the way I go after it. So if that is helpful to you. Um, and finally, uh, your CEO of you, Mary Davis Holt, Inc., you're, you're in charge of you. And you're the product, and you've got a great brand. And I agree that we women have a confidence thing. We don't like to self-promote. We don't like to think we should have to self-promote. Um, the personal brand even sometimes makes us feel uncomfortable. All I can tell you is you do have to do these things. There is no choice here, but you can get more and more comfortable with it the more you do it. And you want it to be authentic and natural and true to you, but the only way you get to do that is if you say it a lot then it just rolls off your tongue. You don't have to think about it. You can do the elevator speech. You can do the five-minute cocktail uh, glass of wine talk. You can do the hour dinner with the CEO. You can cover it all if you are intentional and purposeful. I think am I ending just about on time? I may have, do I have time for a question or do I need to? Okay. Any que I'm happy to take a few questions. I hope this was applicable and usable. Questions? Yes, ma'am. Yes, 
Well, I think if you are the generalist, you're going to have to add those results underneath the generalist. I think generalists are, are fine. You can sell that for sure. But you've got, as a generalist, what did I do? And it's not I was a great leader or it's got to be hard, it results, hard hitting. So just make sure you can put the facts underneath the generalist and you're golden. So if you, maybe you led a task force, maybe you built teams, but what did that task force do? What did that team do? Does that help a little? Okay. Anything else? I answered all your questions. Go forth with your personal brand and have fun with it. Thank you.